Missions is the heartbeat of God. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15 say, How then should they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how should they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? And how should they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. We thank God that he has and continues to allow us to preach the gospel of peace and be in tune with his heartbeat. We would like to introduce and share with you in this video our team ministry as well as where God has called us to labor for him. Our team is composed of the Borland and Taylor families. Over the past several years God has allowed our families to be interwoven in various ways. But in May of 2005 he brought us together to form a missions team. The heart of our team ministry is best stated in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. God has uniquely gifted us to complement one another's strengths and weakness. And we are convinced that this is and has been God's hand in preparation for the calling he has placed on our lives. God has given us a vision as a team that we have put into this following statement. Our vision is to be a ministry of eternal significance that impacts the world for the cause of Christ through the advancement and multiplication of his churches. In order to accomplish this vision, we will evangelize the lost, educate converts, establish New Testament churches, empower indigenous leadership, and encourage church multiplication. The place that God has called us and our sending church, Pauline Baptist Church of Monticello, Arkansas, to impact the world and fulfill this vision is Eastern Kenya, Africa. Now there are a lot of facts and details that we could share with you about Kenya, such as it is a third world country where disease, poverty, and underdeveloped technology are commonplace, but that is not why God has called us to Kenya. We could share with you the beautiful scenery of the country from waterfalls and mountains to breathtaking sunrises and sunsets, from deserts to oceans and on and on, but that is not why God called us to Kenya. We could share with you the amazing animals like the lions and hippos, giraffe, monkeys, wild dogs, pythons, wildebeest, and rhinos, but that is not why God called us to Kenya. Indeed, Kenya is a country with lots of economic and social needs. It is a beautiful place filled with amazing sights and creatures. But the reason God has called us to Kenya is the people. The people who have not believed on Christ. The people who have not heard the message of salvation. The people who have no preacher. The people who need hope. The heartbeat of God compels us to go. God has called us specifically to the people of Eastern Kenya and the Malindi District. The two primary but not exclusive people groups we will be working with are the Giriyama and the Orma. The Giriyama are one of the largest tribes in all of Eastern Kenya with nearly 280,000 people. Many in this tribe have been exposed to the gospel but the need is still great. The Orma tribe is smaller with only 80,000 people. Unlike the Giriyama, most of the Orma have never heard the gospel. This tribe is considered to be 100% Muslim, and the only Jesus they know is from a Muslim perspective. There is also a large international community present that need to see and hear the message of Christ lived and preached. Please begin to pray for the Giriyama and the Orma tribes by name. 
that God will prepare their hearts to receive the gospel message. Our team also needs your prayers as we embark on this pioneer effort in an area where we currently have only a handful of contacts. We need God's wisdom, leadership, protection, and blessing to establish a firm foundation for a strong work in eastern Kenya. We plan to depart June of 2008 for the field. There is so much to do, so many things to learn, but in our ears we continuously hear the heartbeat of God. How should they believe in Him of whom they have not heard?